So now let's talk about cloud computing. So what is cloud computing? The definition is as such. Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of compute power, database storage, application, and other IT resources. The very important keyword here is on-demand. You get it when you need it. And then through a cloud service platform, you're going to get a pay-as-you-go pricing. That means that you're only going to pay for what you requested when you requested it and as you're using it. When you're done using it, you're not going to pay anymore. This is a big shift, right? Then this is cloud computing. So we can provision exactly the right type and size of computing resources you need. Do you need a big server? We have that for you. Do you want a small one? We have that too. Do you want 10? Yes. Do you want two tomorrow? Of course. The cloud really allows you to adapt to the type and size you need. Then you can access all these resources, not with 24 hour notice, not with two hours notice, but instantly. You don't need to order things in advance. When you want a server, and you'll see this in this course, you'll have it within seconds. Then the cloud will also give you a really nice interface. So you can easily access your servers, your storage, databases, and a set of application services. So I'm talking about the cloud, but in specific, AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, owns and maintains the network connected hardware required for these application services while you provision and use what you need via a web application. So we'll see with this interface, we'll make all these things a reality. Now, let's go back to our traditional IT. So we're changing. We have our office or our garage, but now instead of building our own data center, we're going to use the cloud. And in the cloud, which is also a data center, it's just not our data center, we're going to have servers, one, two, three, as we need and as we go. And we're just going to pay for exactly what we're using. So you have actually been using the cloud without even knowing it because it is omnipresent, but not necessarily visible. So if you use a web client such as Gmail, well, for example, it's an email cloud service and you're going to pay only for the emails you're stored. You're not provisioning servers when you use Gmail, you just use it. Maybe you've stored some data on the cloud maybe through Dropbox, Google Drive, Google Photos, iCloud, I don't know. But with Dropbox, for example, it's a cloud storage service. You're going to put your files on Dropbox. And originally, fun fact, Dropbox was built on AWS. So we've been using a cloud storage service as well without knowing it. And Netflix, it's huge. It is built entirely on AWS and it provides you a cloud service, which is to get video on demand. Now, obviously these Cloud services are very different from AWS, but we'll learn what is goes behind these services and how AWS can help you build these kind of cloud services. So let's go one step further. There are different kinds of clouds out there. The first one is called a private cloud and a provider is could be Rackspace. This is cloud services used by a single organization. They're not exposed to the public. So you get your own private cloud, your own private data center. It's just managed by someone else. You still have complete control over it and you have more security for a sensitive application, which may meet some specific business needs. This is out of scope for this course, but still good to mention. Now the public cloud is more interesting. So three famous cloud providers that are public are Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud and Amazon Web Services that we'll be learning in this course, obviously. So in this case, the cloud resources own and operated by a third party cloud service provider and they're delivered over the internet. And we'll see the six advantages of using cloud computing. So in this instance, that means that from AWS, we'll be able to request what we need when we want it. And then lastly, which is also important for the exam is the concept of a hybrid cloud. So with hybrid, we're actually going to do a mix of private and public. We're going to keep some servers on premises and we'll extend some of the capabilities we need into the cloud. That means that we'll have a hybrid of our own infrastructure and the AWS cloud. We'll have control over sensitive assets in your private infrastructure, but we'll have the flexibility and the cost effectiveness of using the public cloud. Now, five characteristics of cloud computing. The first one, is that it's fully on demand and self-service. Users, and we'll see this in this course, we will be able to provision resources and use them without having anyone from AWS intervene. Then we'll be having access to a broad network. The resources will be available over the network and they can be accessed in diverse ways as we'll see in this course. 
it'll be multi-tenancy and we'll have resource pooling. So that means that not just us, but other customers from AWS can share the same infrastructure and applications while still having security and privacy. And then these multiple customers are going serviced from the same physical resources. So here, me, you, and other customers, we're going to share this entire data center of the cloud. This gives us rapid elasticity and scalability. That means that we can automatically and quickly acquire and dispose resources when we need. And that means that we can quickly and easily scale based on demand. And that is a major advantage of the cloud. Finally, it's a measured service. So the usage is going to be measured and we're going to pay exactly for what we have used. This is a big shift from on-premises. Now, six advantages. We are going to trade capital expenses for operational expenses, so CapEx for OpEx. That means that you don't own hardware, you're going to pay on demand, and that will reduce your total cost of ownership, your TCO, and your operational expense. That means that you don't buy the hardware in advance, you're just going to rent it from AWS then we're going to benefit from massive economies of scale. The price is because we are using AWS, not just us, but other customers, and so many people are using it, then the prices will be reduced by AWS over time because AWS will be more efficient at running due to its large scale. We also need to stop guessing capacity. Before, we had to plan and buy servers in advance and hope that it would meet the capacity, but now we can actually scale automatically based on the actual measured usage for our application. And because everything is on demand, we have increased speed and agility. We can create, operate, and do stuff right away. No blockers for us to be efficient. And finally, we have a huge cost that we don't need to have anymore, which is we can stop spending money running and maintaining data centers. And this allows a team of, say, five people to create a global application in minutes, thanks to leveraging this AWS global infrastructure that is going to be worldwide. Okay, so the problems we just solved by using the cloud is that we're more flexible, we're more cost effective, we are more scalable because we can add resources as we need to go along. We're elastic. We can scale out and scale in when needed. We also have high availability and fault tolerance because we don't rely on one data center. We rely on a fleet of data centers all around the world. We're more agile. We can rapidly develop, test, and launch software applications. And all of this make the cloud a really no-brainer. So that's it just for an introduction of how the cloud is going to be effective. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to view one step further what are the different types of cloud computing.